nagkumpirin siya yung mga natitira pang uh, what a, whoever was left now of Team Sevens. Luke came up with a plan to to, uh, to jog all their memories. Si Gakoto, si Romin, si uh, Neil, at si Asana. Wait. Starting a movie project <laughs> from auditions to 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 production. Pero <clears throat> isa lang yung medyo kumagat sa plano nila. Sa plano nila, si Gako to. So, sinund, sinundan niya yung mga arrows. Hanggang sa nakarating siya sa templo ni Otis. Where everyone else is waiting. So, niriinak nila yung yung pag- um, yung pag-install ni ni Yuga. That scene wherein na uh, in-install ni Yuga yung Rush Duel format sa Goha, sa system ng Goha, biglang tumakbo si Gakoto pa, papalabas ng templo. Sabi nila, Luke, Uy, teka, tumakbo. Baka, baka kung ano niya yung... Eh, napansin din ni Yuga. Sabi niya, Teka, baka, baka, baka kukunin niya yung bike ko kasi nung, di ba nga nung in-install ko yung Rush Duel format, nalobat ako nun. Pero, Imbis na may bumaling nga siya pero instead of um, instead of um, Yuga's bike may dalawa siyang kasama na na robot and he just declared that this is that uh, Rush Duels that this um, this is an act of um, what you call this um, indecency uh, totally against the um, tradition now he he now seeks to punish all of them. Rinosuke has had it of this uh, of this charade. He namo na niya sa isang duelo si Gakoto. Then due to his actions na motivate sila sila Galian, si Swear, yeah, yeah, the Swear guy and even Sebastian na magsibalikan sila sa mga sa mga amo nila and do the same thing which they did we can now assume that um while the duel between Rinosuke and Gakoto was going on this was happening final scene it seems na oh, maganda yung opening turn ni ano ni Rinosuke nakapag nakapagsamon siya ng ng level 7 yung kanya siguro yung kanyang ace yun yung bago niyang ace eh. then all of a sudden Gakoto summons his own ace Basically, Gakoto comes back with a comes back with a le- seemingly high-level monster of his own. Let's just break this episode down now. Critic sub style. Base. First, probably two-thirds of the actual episode. Um, fast but um, fast but amusing. Ang pacing. The pacing of this episode, especially during the first two-thirds. Ma- ma- marilealize mo to eh. Uy! Nasabi ko nga kanina eh. Uy! Mukhang... Mukhang effective to plano ni Luca. ah. Kumagat si Gako to. <laughs> the pacing also served as a... Um, uh, what you call this? Also became fuel for a fan service moment. Kasi, we now... Uh, we now get to get... To go back to episode 1 of Sevens. Although, hindi ganito yung naging katapusan eh. Do I have complaints about the pacing? No! <laughs> Absolutely not! It's because of the pacing that it made me flash back to episode 1. And not only episode 1, folks. Also, um, it also gave me those Arc 5 feels. It made me go back to the final 5 episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Sabi ko sa inyo, uh, for quite a while now, guys. Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is one of the best fan service animes ever. Since Gintama. And it's serving out fan service moments from, from previous Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Aside from its own, of course. So, ayun nga. It gave me, uh, the pacing of this, of this particular episode gave me those Arc 5 feels. Kaya, talagang no-co-prints ako. 
Flow naman. First gear shift here was um when Luke presented his idea na i-jog lahat ng memories nila Romin, Gakoto, uh, Asana, Neil, and to some degree, si Roa. Through his movie project. Why did I call this a gear shift? Kasi, although um, silly as it sounds, it triggered the episode. Kasi for the most, for the most part of this episode, doon talaga nakapokus siya sa implementation ng idea ni ni Luke it, it sounds outrageous pero it almost worked on Gakoto so probably Luke is on Luke, Luke is uh, Luke is on to something here okay and if it weren't for for that gear shift hindi mapupunti si Rino si si Rinosuke and just just flat out challenge Gakoto to a duel. <laughs> kaya, kaya nga gear shift eh. Second gear shift was when, well, akala ko nga kanina eh, kukunin na ni Gakoto yung, yung bike ni Yuka para maging, para magsilbing charger dun sa, ba, sa, ano eh, sa laptop ni Yuga nun. But no, things uh, turn out differently. But why did I call it a gear shift? What? Just goes to show you that no matter how good your plan is, it can sometimes not work. <laughs> Final gear shift was the time when when Rinosuke said this na um, against uh, Gakoto na the memories that Rush Duels um, produce something to this effect. You can never deny that. Kaya ako nandi, kaya kita hinamon ngayon sa isang duelo. Oh, why did I call it shift? Um, if it weren't for this gear shift, hindi mamomotivate yung yung mga alipores nila, Asana at Neil, na gumawa na sarili nila steps. So, they all uh, rushed out the temple and went to, went to see their own masters and challenged them to a duel. Same thing na ginawa kasi ni Rinosuke. Luke's plan of a um, of a step by of a step by step reenactment of the whole probably of the whole series. It's now a divide and conquer strategy. So these three gears that I saw. Um, the last two will have implications down the line in the um, like a forty. Mm. In the and then, tika. Yeah, in the in, in in succeeding episodes, they will have implications. You know, you know, nakita ko dito. Because well, whether we like it or not, guys, Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens will be ending in March to give way to to the new one, Yu-Gi-Oh Go Rush. So again, it's because of this. Because of the pacing and and of course the flow now, I have those arc five feels. Ganito ng ganito rin yung nararamdaman ko nung when I was watching the final five episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh arc five. Ganito ng ganito rin. Plot wise, malinis. Bakit? Rinak bit lang eh. <laughs> Odo katawat katawat tawa. Pero merong um. Uh, the intent of Luke restoring the restoring the memories of his um, of his uh, of his closest friends is there, and it almost worked. You gotta have a uh, a really nice and clean plot to to um, to express to the audience what Luke's intentions are. So yeah, so what if? Um, hindi yun ang naging resulta. But, hey! <clears throat> Someone from Team 7 stepped up, challenged Gakoto to a duel. Hmm. Kanya siguro. Right now, 
A duel is the best way to jog someone's memories. Go! This is how you resolve matters in, in this franchise. Duelo! <laughs> you resolve it through a duel. Yeah, well, Rinosuke had the right idea. Alright? He had the right idea here. So, I hope in the next episode, I hope in the next episode he wins against Gakuto. Kasi, Gakuto is no, um, he's no pushover when it comes to dueling. May, may ibubuga rin siya. Right? He almost beat Yuga in a duel. I really gotta comment the plot of this episode. And to be continued dito ha, tandaan nyo. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 82. She popped. Mmm! Two thumbs up! Excuse me. So, ano ang magiging implications ngayon ng tatlong duels na ito? In at least, no, let's not look, um, let's look beyond the next episode. Ito yun ha. If Gallant, Rinosuke, and Sebastian win their respective duels, whoa! They now have uh, three really strong duelists back into the fold. Si Asana, si ne Lalo si Nail, okay? The the creator of the of the uh, of, of the maximum salmon. The the kid behind the maximum salmon, and of course Gakoto of the original Team Sevens. So with them back on on uh, on the right team. Goha Yuga doesn't stand a chance in the um, in pushing his plan of um, chaos, disorder, and um, basically um, <coughs> basically pushing his own brand of confusion. Kasi, well, on the flip side, if one of them only, um, if one of them loses, pahirapan na naman. Kahit sino, kahit sino sa kanila matalo, pahirapan na naman yun. Kasi, they'll now be down to just three. Instead of, instead of just two, they'll be down to three. Kasi ulit na naman sila dun sa, 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 sa tao nila na na nanalo Supo, uh, well if ever if all of if all three of them win their respective duels nasabi ko sa inyo mga kalaisal it'll now be down to just the cousins yung magpinsan si Romin at si Roa sa tingin ko madali na makuha ang dalawang yun alright because they practically live on the they practically live in the same building and um, wouldn't it be nice if uh, if Roa had had his memories restored first right kasi eh mayabang dito si Roa eh right if someone tells him na Roa your memories have been uh, have been restored siguro ang sasabihin niya ha? bakit? May nakilabas sa memories ko. Mataas ang pride nun. <laughs> Kaya to, he might, he might challenge Go Kayoga to a duel right away. Ganong kataas ang pride dun. So, a lot of implications, a lot of things can happen. So, let's hope, I'm sincerely calling on the Yu, calling on all Yu-Gi-Oh! fans to, to hope and pray that in the next episode, all three of them would win their respective duels. Maganda sa akin eh. Okay? Magandang ano yun eh. Pero okay lang kung if, if one of them uh, if one of them uh, loses. Okay lang. Kasi ganun talaga eh. E, um, a hero's road is never is never smooth. It's always rough. That's one of the many things you will learn about watching anime. So again, 
Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens Episode 82. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this. Wow, this Yu-Gi-Oh! Series pang live stack. Mukhang patapos na nga eh, talaga. Based on um, what's happening now in this uh, in this series, talagang feel ko na talagang matatapos na to eh. Alright? Feel ko talagang matatapos na ang, ang storyline ng Seven. So, hey, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck in the uh, in the CHD, no worries. Pero, I strongly recommend that you follow, that you subscribe to my Patreon, or be a fan of mine, or be a part of my fan group on Beagle. Right? But until that time, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. With, wow, um, his his own version of the Ultra Sensor in Yakitsu. So, I'm going to go again. Uh, then, sa sobrang uh, efficient access that I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the Polo to see Yanagi. So, technically, he's done. Because of this, alam na ni Horo Horo at Chocolate kung saan talunin ang talawa so kasi binigyan niya ng idea ngayon to his uh, to all his evasive maneuvers na ginawa so may silbi pa yun may uh, talagang noon pa man pinano na niya ito so, so in case na hindi niya matalo yung hindi niya matalo yung tatlo take over na sila either si Chocolate or si Horo Horo Eventually, well, they won the match. All because of Horo Horo. Nagpakita ng... But, arguably, for the first time in this reboot, talaga nagpakita ng promise si Horo Horo nito. And wow! Okay? Kahit si Yo, nagulat. Like, well, he said it by, he said it by the, this episode. Since when did Ren get an upgrade? So, kahit sabi ko talaga nagtaka Yung pala Tinura na pala sa ni Ni Pasqua Gabads Yung Yung pinaka spirit alay ngayon Ni Chocolat Who uh, Who was a Puna competitor At the summer fight So But In a way Ayun Ultra Sensi react Ngayon rin pala yung tinuro nito Grabe Final scene How Is able to assess the situation Kasi eh, through his, uh, siyempre, sa dami ng alipores niya So, he's just receiving feedback from these guys Good na natitiyuse ka Si Horo Horo, may kinatago talagang na kasi to And, he really wants Horo Horo uh, recruited Kahit ang gandara kasi nagka-interest nagka ni Horo Horo So now, um, all of them are preparing for their, for their next fight Kahit si, kahit si so now let's break this down. Critics hop style. Pace. Mm. Okay, pacing niya. Okay, ang pacing niya. Because kung ako na imo roller coaster type, no, I couldn't feel. I didn't have that roller. I didn't have those roller coaster feels when I was watching that episode. Ano yun? It was only fast when it needed to be. Siyempre, may fight scene. So, talagang, talagang bibilis ang pacing doon. But, um, I'm gonna sum it all up now. Uh, Patreon, mga kalaysa. Do I have complaints? Nope, absolutely not. Maganda ang pagkaka-pacing ng episode na to. Slow naman. The only gear shit I saw here was, um, was when Chocolove uh, well, offered his um, his spirit ally services to um, to Team Doren. 
Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, it fully explains right here on how Ren, Chokolav, and especially si Horo Horo, how they um, how were they how they were able to master the Ultra Century Aketsu without even going through um without without even going through Mickey's tutelage in the first place. Is it a gear shift that you can learn a lesson from? Of course. So based on the gear shift that we saw in this episode, yeah, it will have implications later on down to um 49, 44. Down to the final 12 episodes. This will have implications because um, Ren is now one step closer to facing Yo in an actual shaman fight. Ito talaga ang gusto niya eh. It's a very pivotal gear shift. I tell you. Plot wise. No side stories or back stories on this one. Kaya, malinis ang episode folks. Bakit? Kasi, the ones, um, the um, side stories being shown in this episode, they're, they're just mere, they're just mere explainers of how, of how Ren uh, got this new technique, got this new oversoul, how Horo Horo um, was keeping his dark side all along, all along, all, all this time. You need a really clean plot to um to what you call this to fully explain the entire episode. And these explainers, yep, they pretty much explain the entire episode. Okay. No complaints again when it comes to the plot. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. So Shaman King 2021, episode 40. Sorry about the tricycle trip, okay? Because uh, I had to run to the groceries for medicines. Two thumbs up! Let's talk about the implications of this episode um, in the final 12 episodes of this, uh, of this reboot. What is it? Ren, Horo Horo, Ren, Chocolat, and especially Horo Horo, Pwe, Horo Horo, they've all been upgraded to the to Ultra Century Yaketsu mode. So, um, pinakita rin si Hao dito. And should Hao be concerned? Yes. Pero, if you look at it from Hao's point of view, Ang tingin niya kasi, lumabas na yung lumabas na yung talagang bangis ni Horo Horo rito. And now, he wants Horo Horo to join him. And, well, I'm sorry how, but the Gadara is also interested too. <laughs> after after what they just saw in this fight. With Team Daren upgrading, well, business has just picked up. So, it's not about it's not about yo anymore. It's also Ren, Horo Horo, Chocolat. Anybody that has uh, that has mastered the Ultra Senjiri Yaketsu. So that, no, that also includes Faust and Ryu. And, well, sinabi nga ni... Sinabi nga ni, ni Yo dito eh. By the, um... By tomorrow, we'll have new Oversouls. Wow, it's quite, pro it's quite prophetic when he said that. Magkakatotoba? You can guarantee it. <laughs> so again, Shaman King 2021, episode 14. Again, pardon the tricycle bit. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this wild, this great people of lifestyle. Horror, 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 horror. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And, for you who are, for all of you who are still stuck in, chill out muna. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest.
Sorry guys, um, it was quite an exhilarating episode. Kasi ganit, ganito yun. There was this, there was a kid named Doi, uh, Shota Doi, who's, what, uh, object of bullying siya. In, by any means possible, okay? That was how, um, that was how miserable his life was in high school. Until, he found out that he was uh, that he had this terminal disease called cellular sclerosis. So, pinakita ng episode that sabi ng doctor, this was the same doctor that diagnosed the main protag with multiple sclerosis. You need to go into cold sleep for at least five years para tuluyan ka ng ma, uh, gumaling sa sakit na to. And so he did. Now, he only has one wish that after five years, they will all be dead. Well, proverbially, yun ang, yun ang, yun ang, yun ang gusto niya, Chris Ross. Because after five years, yep, he woke up, totally cured, and, well, he's now in a world full of women. <laughs> the school he belongs to, binalik siya doon. Pero, siya na lang, nag, siya na lang ang lalaki. <laughs> One day, um, Sinama siya ng sinama siya ni Karen sa music room. Look who's well, look who's waiting. Um, his class advisor and music teacher from five years ago. And now, um, well, basically, she wants to sleep with him. Natural. So, well, pinatawag pinatawag siya ng ng teacher niyang to one night. Kala niya, may pag-uusapan niyo. Yung pala. Mm. Bingo! <laughs> well, all I can say is, he's not a virgin anymore. <laughs> Dahil, naka-first time niya ang kanyang, uh, uh, ang kanyang, ang kanyang class advisor na, <laughs> later on, inamin ng, Inamin ng, ng babaeng ito that it was also her first time. Wow, how lucky can you get? Much less a kid. Grabe. So right now, I envy this kid. <laughs> Wala nga, NBSB pala itong, itong class advisor niya. Siya pa na first time. Wow. <laughs> Final scene. But, nag-report si Karen sa UW. And, um, so, after her report, she puts up uh, the pictures of number one and number two. Of course, the main pro tag. And, yung nauna sa kanyang nagising. Sinabi lang niya, I am losing to either one of you two. Bang! So, guys, let's break this episode down now. Critics Hub style. I am so fucking I stretch my heart. Take it. Okay. Pace. <laughs> so the pacing felt like, yeah, it was felt like it was the pilot all over again. Pero it involves uh, this. Um, well, obviously. He's um, he's way younger than the main protag and or number one. He's way younger. So go to mga mga thirteen or fourteen years old lang to. Si um si Shota. And well, I'm going to um, I'm going to take my ano, I I'm going to give my take on this. Um, uh, my take on this is, is not isn't that long. Do I have complaints? <laughs> complaints, complaints. <laughs> I love it. Okay. It was a slow but fun pacing. With a pacing like this, talagang, it's fun watching an anime episode. Despite the breast exposure, despite the um the lewd scenes, throw all of that away and look at the story. And the pacing of the episode. Talagang. 
<laughs> you'll be you'll be really satisfied, right? You'll be really satisfied. Flow naman. First gear shift here was when um yeah the woman shot awake shot awoke up. At ang sumalubo sa kanya si Karen. Why did I call it si gear shift? With this gear shift, you can tell uh, this lead character this one. Welcome to the rest of your life, kid. <laughs> it was a fun gear shift. Kasi, another, another male has survived the MK virus. Just like the main protag. So, there's hope for humanity. Ang problema nga lang, wala pang 18 ito. So, how can you convince a 13 or 14 year old to have sex with you if you're a woman? You, well, number one, number one factor there is you have to be older. Kita mo yung ginawa ng music teacher niya. Alright? Take tips from her view from his music teacher. If you're, um, uh, if you're having, if you're having, if you're having, if you're having sex problems. Right? So, yeah, that, that's why I call it the gear shift. Eh. So, I, it made me think. And it made me, um, no? It didn't make me feel sorry for, um, uh, for Sota. Kasi, well, he should be happy. <laughs> he's, uh, he, he's a teenager. He should be happy about this because, because five years have passed, sigurado, lahat ng mga nambuli sa kanya ay patay na. And I could see it through the pacing of this episode that this was his only assurance. So, <laughs> no complaints whatsoever. I am flabbergasted by the pacing. Ah, by the pacing pala. By this gear shift. Alright? No complaints about that. Kaya ko, kaya ko tinawag na gear shift ito, mga ka-lifestyle. Second gear shift was when, um, <clears throat> he saw his class advisor for uh, again after after so many years. Kasi five years siyang natulog, di ba? And he awakens after five years, seeing his um his beloved class advisor, music teacher for the first time, and she hasn't. She it seems that she hasn't aged. Why did I call this a gear shift? It confirms what I said in the uh, in the first gear shift. Welcome to the rest of your life, kid. <laughs> Even your own music teacher wants to have sex with you. Knowing for a fact that you're... Well, sabihin natin na um, the aging process has stopped for Shota. Five years later, he still might, he might still be 13 or 14. Pero technically, he should be 18 right now. Pero... Um, due to the cold sleep, uh, siguro, probably, um, the aging process uh, slowed down for him. So, yeah, it makes you, uh, it also makes you wonder, this, this gear shift. Final gear shift was when, um, was when Karen made her report, yeah, in final scene. But why did I call it a gear shift? Because you could sense that um, that there's competition between the assistants. Because she feels that um, Suwo and the other assistants are leaving her behind, are making her lag behind. You can really suspect there's competition between between those assistants. Because but hindi naman magsasarita ng ganon yung tao kung if she doesn't feel um, threatened by these two. So these three gear shifts that I saw, um, hmm, the second one may play a role down the line in this anime. Bakit? Kasi, naunahan pa niya ang main protag eh. Nakauna na siya. At pwede pa maulit ito. <laughs> Blood lies. Well, malinis. Because from origin to present timeline. So, the plot is clean. 
Hindi yung um, the episode started with oh, nga, eh, that uh, that volleyball accident scene. Then bigla bigla nag origin story. No, talagang sinundan yung format ng pilot. Origin, then present timeline. <laughs> then it progressed to to the end. It's a really clean plot. Kaya well. You would instantly appreciate this episode kasi malinis ang plot niya. Even if you're new to watching anime, ma-appreciate mo. So, uh, I repeat, the plot for, for this episode is really clean. So, pace, flow, and plot, I almost didn't tell the, uh, the pacing from the flow. Ibig sabihin nun, ganun ka sa plot. Because I wasn't aware, I wasn't totally aware until I've, uh, I've actually finished the episode. So, doon ko lang, doon ko lang sinort kung uh, what scenes uh, hallmark the pacing and what scenes are gear shifts. Doon ko lang na-assert yun. Hindi habang pinanonood ko yung episode. No. It, the episode was that good. So, World's End Harem, Episode 3? Trecho! Mm. Two thumbs up! I confess, mga kalaysal, I am having a blast reviewing this anime. Tatlong episodes pa lang. You know, um, rarely do you see me review borderline hentais. Because, siyempre, at the end of the day, for me, the storyline is all that matters. Like I said, um, <clears throat> three weeks ago, that the last borderline hentai, um, and yeah, the last two borderline hentais that I uh, that I reviewed were Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time, which made it to the inaugural Lifestyle Ten, and Super Hexeros. Super Hexeros is also a borderline hentai, although. It's also a superhero anime, pero the, su- the suggestiveness of that anime, ooh, <laughs> grabe. So, behind those two were great storylines. Kasi, uh, Peter Grill, talagang the most compromising position, the most compromising position a man could have after after winning, after winning a, uh, after winning a big worldwide tournament, he's now proclaimed the strong, uh, the, mo- the strongest warrior in the world. Ba? Kung babae ka, uy, can I have your baby? <laughs> Apat yun. Apat yung, hindi, lima. Kasama na yung fiancé niya. So, talagang sakit sa ulo. Sakit sa ulo. But, here in World's End Harem, I actually envy the, the lead characters here. Eh. Because, hello, you got, proverbially, you got isikai into a world where there's only five of you men and five billion women. Ano, tigi sa billion kayo para, para anakan sila lahat? Impossible! <laughs> so, you, you gotta niche down your uh, your choice of women. Diba? So, the main product still has control over his manhood right here. In Peter Grill, almost zero when the, fi- when, when, uh, when the finale came around. So, grabe. Like I said just a while ago, mga lifestyle, I am having a blast reviewing this anime, and we're only three episodes in, so I'm expecting great things right now from this anime. So again, World's End Harem episode three, two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga lifestyle. Ooh, shota, shota, shota. I really envy the kid. <laughs> So Patreon, well, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still 
glued to the CHD. Again, I strongly recommend subscribing to my Patreon or um, joining my joining my Bigo fan group. May exclusive content ako sa inyo doon. So, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews on this digest. The Aftermath. First part of the episode, Mirai goes into self-pity mode. Pero, in-assure naman siya ni, ni Saki that they all did the right thing because it's what, uh, it's what Nanato wanted. Well, as they say, you can't, uh, you can't deny a dying man's wish. Later on in the day, bumalik sila sa, sa headquarters nila. So, pinagluto siya ni Saki while uh, him and Revel were no, seeing kung anong, kung anong itsura ng field ngayon. Wala na si wala na si Karate. Eh. Wala na si Metro Polyman. Wala na si Nana to. So, in essence, there are now just six of them. Anim na God candidates na lang ang buhay. So, chinart na lang ni, ni La Revel at ni Mirai kung sino-sino ang mga angels ang natitira pa. Ang in the running pa. So, there's um, unang pa ng lumabas sa bibig ni Revel si Penema. Okay? He's known as the Angel of Gains. And later on, we will find out that Penema is the angel of the, of the kid who shot Metropolitan with that red arrow. Ito pala yung batang yun, si Suito. Ito rin yung, yung batang na photograph ng isang detective ni Nana to in, the, in Jinbo Stadium. Ito pala yung tumira ng red arrow kay Metropolitan. They are in the same school. Kaya pala. He finally um, introduced himself to the whole wide world that he is uh, he is Suito, a sixth grader, and uh, he was the one responsible for controlling Metropolitan. So pinabalod na nito ni Lamirai at Saki. And Mirai thought, is this kid crazy? So, final scene. Diniklare niya on national TV that he wants Red to become God. So, we know we all know who Red is. It's Mirai. <laughs> so, so, ako, nagtaka ako eh. Teka muna. Di ba na, sabi ko kanina eh, di ba na sa'yo lahat, lahat ng rings ni Metropolitan, even the ability now to shoot white arrows, why, Choose another God candidate to become God. Ano laro mo? Ha? Huh? What's your deal? So, gumagaw na ako. But anyway, I'm going to make this review as short as possible because umiinit na ang anime na to. Kasi patapos na eh. Let's break this episode down now. CHD, uh, ano, Critics Hub style. Base. The pacing only picked up during the final scene. I don't know, kasi I did not feel that yung slow and excruciating feels kasi there's no villain right now. Hindi natin matawag na villain itong si Suito. Kasi um, well, Mirai already already deems him dangerous kasi siya pala nakakuha ng mga rings ni Metropolitan. So, that's basically five. Five, the powers of five God candidates. Nasa kanya na. Kasi, chinart nga nila ni Revel eh. Uh, in one scene. So, the pacing has been focused on who is left and which angels are, which angels should they watch out for. Pero ang lumalabas ngayon, baka si Penny mape. Eh. eh, mukha pala ng anghel na to, hindi nakatiwatiwala eh. He has a gold X on his face. 
Sa lahat yata ng mga mga 13 angels, ito pa ang mukhang demojo eh. Putangin na, nilagyan mo sa alangan nito ni si Mirai. You can see that through the pacing, business has just picked up where it left off. <laughs> But do I have complaints about the pacing of this episode? Obvious naman na hindi eh, mga ka-lifestyle. I love it. Kasi, hindi, um, hindi kinain ng buong episode ang aftermath feels eh. So, um, well, while, um, while Mirai and Saki were uh, having some R and R kasi pinagluto ni Saki si Mirai eh, ng kanyang mga paboritong pagkain siyempre mag-boyfriend and while, while, while this was going on there was one scene na lahat ng all the six remaining angels um, met in a conference so nandun din sila sila Rebel at Nase silang dalawa So they were, we were able to beat, of course, Penema. Uh, they call him, they call him the Angel of Games. He loves playing games. And there's also si Raseli Bayon, the Angel of um. Ano kung tawag sa kanya? But anyway, we will get to know the other angels in uh, in future episodes. Don't worry. So hindi natin hindi natin tapos madaliin yan. So right now, ang threatening ngayon si Penema. Kasi eh, sa'yo yung obvious, sa'yo yung nagsusulso sa batang to. Kasi ang batang ito ay God Candidate. Flow naman. Of first gear shift here was um, that scene where Mirai and Rebel were assessing the situation na kung sino pa yung mga natitirang angels. Okay? Hindi mo na nila pinakilaman yung, pangal- yung ano yung mga identities sa mga God Candidates. Because oh, what's important to them now are the angels. But why did I call it a gear shift? Kasi, habang um, they are reeling from the truth that that uh, that Nanato is gone, and of course, the joy of Metropolitan being dead, <laughs> okay? They, well, they still have to face reality. There are six God candidates remaining. So, malamang, six angels are still are still in contention. Okay? Sinase, Rebel. Talaman yun. And of course, now we know who the other angel is. Si Penema. This particular gear ship will make you deep dive. Uh, deep dive along with Mirai and Rebel. Kasi, okay, we now know three. Who are the other three naman? Nakalmoto ko lang talaga yung isang pangalan ng angel na pinanggit kanine in that conference. Second gear ship was when yun nga yung um, was that the first or the second one? and then when um, Suito showed himself on national TV no brainer of a gear shift folks kasi the first it's been the first time since Metropolitan that a God candidate actually that actually exposed himself to the whole wide world. Si Suito pala ang kumontrol kay Metropolitan well into um, well into the hostage taking uh, well into the hostage taking situation. Baka siya pa nga ang nagsulsul kay Metropolitan na gawin ito. It's another gear shift that you will have the um, the potential to deep dive into. Talagang pagsususpecha mo na lang ang batang ito eh. Final gear ship was of course the final scene. Ano ba naman ito? Uh, well, again, a no-brainer of a gear ship. Kasi, hindi pa sila nakakainga from from the demise of Metropolitan and of course, um, the loss of Nanato, ito na naman tayo. Problema. Another God candidate has declared that Red should be God. <laughs> eh si Mirai yun. So, problema na naman ito kay Mirai. So, Mirai and Saki are now assuming the worst. That they will be hunted down by other God candidates. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, the final two, and the last two, will play a role down the line in this, um, yeah, 16, 17. 
the final nine, kasi we're now in the final ten episodes eh. So, they will have implications. Plot lies. Planchado. Kasi, dinitagi dito kung paano kung paano nakontrol ni Suito si Metropoliman. But, hey, you can't count this backstory out. It's a crucial one. Kasi, nagtaka na lang si Mirai kung bakit mayroong Red Arrow na nakapasak kay Metropoliman eh. So, paano niya nalaman yung strategy nila? di ba? So, kaya pala, hindi pala alam ni Metropoliman na na tinirahan siya ng Red Arrow. So, it's all because of Sweeto. Yung schoolmate niya. <laughs> Nag-candidate din. Malas niya. Pero, um, his angel, si Penema, is just um, first rank. So, hanggang Red Arrow lang. Buti na lang. <laughs> A plot this this iron out will make you realize that eh. Again, another deep dive. So, you cannot just cut out this backstory. Kasi, as far as I'm concerned, a new arc has just started with this backstory. Kaya, very crucial ang backstory na to. Kaya, well ironed out ang plot ng episode na to. If they, if you as the viewer took out this backstory, wala ka maintindihan sa episode na to. I'm very sure of it. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode, giving us another good one from this anime. So, Platinum End, episode 15. Excuse me. I don't see it. Mm. Two thumbs up! With the potential uh, main antagonist, I don't want to call him the villain yet, kasi hindi pa nagpapakita ng ng, uh, ng kasamaan nito eh. So, uh, I'm just assuming uh, I, I don't want to think long term when it comes to Suito's character. When it comes to Suito. Ayoko muna siyang tawagin na villain because uh, I think it's not up to that point yet. Pero, main antagonist siya. Accidental? Yes. Because he's just a kid. So, ano magiging implications ngayon? Down the line, up to the finale. I can only see big ones. Kasi, anin na lang silang God Candidate. And, well, bilang mga viewers, ano ang assurance natin na wala nang, wala nang tulad ni Metropoliman sa kanila? Can you assure me of that, mga ka-lifestyle? Hmm? Right now, comment below. Can you assure me of that? Na wala na susunod pa kay Metropoliman? Na ganun kasama? So right now, uh, the main antagonist is uh, is Suito. And his angel is Penema. But, one thing's for sure. Penema cannot be trusted. Penema cannot be trusted right now. I think there's a reason why he's called the Angel of Games. And more likely, malalaman natin yun in, in the upcoming episodes. So, tutukan natin. So again, Platinum End Episode 15. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime manga lifestyle. Hmm. I feel sorry for the guy. Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still um, glued to the CHD, no worries. But I'll still recommend you um, subscribing to my Patreon or um, joining my fan group on Beagle para may exclusive, to para may exclusive content. Naman kayo. But until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.
Folks, this is the first time uh, this anime is going to be featured in the CHD. So, we're going to run it down as fast as possible. But, of course, na focus na kay M4A1 ang storya. So, she was on the run, but she was also leaving clues at for, for her comrades. Na pick up kagad ni, ni Commander Genjian yung yung signal niya at yung gusto niyang mangyari. She's very well aware that an executioner and um and some uh, lower level dolls na entourage nito is after her. Kasi uh, during the opening scene, meron siya sinap down na drone. Kay executioner yun. So, she already figured out what kind of um what kind of uh, what kind of a doll is chasing her. Ayun nga. So she left some clues that um for the for the base to figure out. Eventually they did figure out and Genshan issued the order to to back her up. Moment of truth. Ayun na nga. Na mga natuntunan na siya ng executioner. So the battle in uh the battle in Sus. Overpowering na na dolly to kasi high-end model. When reinforcements came out sila MP5, uh, so, the odds suddenly got even kasi sila MP5 pala on en route to to M4A1's exact location, marami na silang tinumba mga doll. So, what? Executioner is now left alone. So, ayun na. She's completely outnumbered. Then, the highlight of this episode. She, um, she arrogantly, um, said na, well, your friends are still out there, di ba? Something to this effect. Something to this effect. And, right now, even I don't have any idea what's happening to them. Sa sobrang buisit ni M4A1, M4A1 blew half her face off. <laughs> Inubos ni M4 even lahat ng bala doon sa carbine niya. I just witnessed Winter 2022's first overkill moment in that sequence. Pero, final scene. She, well, she gets eventually, she eventually gets rescued. Sinakay sa helicopter and she was brought back to base where she gets to meet the new commander. Yung kanilang bagong field commander. Yan, si Genshan. But, while all this, all this was going on, She's telling, uh, her head is telling this. I'll come back for you. Don't worry. So, yun. <laughs> anyway, mga ka lifestyle. Let's break this episode down. Now. Since it's the first time this anime is going to be featured in the CHD. Pace. Um. From the moment the, um, the opening scene ended, I really felt that, um, a slow and excruciating pace is about to um is about to um is about to be, is about to be thrown at my face and it did pero nung um bandang latter half of the episode medyo bumilis na ang pacing kasi executioner is on on the hunt for M4E1 so then eventually the the two meet pero not without um not without some booby traps by M4A1 herself. But do I have complaints? Obvious ba? Wala! <laughs> I love it! Okay? Talagang, um, it's the pacing you would, you would practically see in a military anime. Military, and, uh, well, to tell you the truth, mga ka-lifestyle, this is a mecha anime. We can consider this one kasi ang mga bida yan si M4A1 yung buong AR team they're all um, they're all cyborgs so yep the main protagonists are cyborgs so mecha nga ito <laughs> it's also what the PC will, uh, will make you um, will make you realize flow naman first gear shift here was the opening scene nung uh, when M4A1 shot that shot that drone down at meron siya kinuha niya yung memory module parang yeah parang memory module doon niya nakalata 
na kung anong kung anong klasing doll ang pina ang pinakabul sa kanya ng ano ng ng kalaban. Why did I call the gear shift? Obvious, it triggered the episode. Second gear shift was when kumontak si si um si Carlin si si Carlin si Carlin pala kay Genchan. Carlin is uh, Genchan's uh, assistant dito sa base na to. Why did I call it si Gearship? It set the tone now for uh, the battle scene that's about to happen. At saka, right there and then, makikita natin na swerte ang, ang Team AR na meron na silang ganitong, ka, ganitong katalinong commander. A lot of deep dives. Final Gearship was, of course, I am now dubbing it Winter 2022's first overkill moment. <laughs> Grabe. M4A1 literally blew half that executioner's head off. Talagang binura niya yung mukha ng 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 doll na to. If you don't classify this as an overkill moment, there yeah, you might have a problem. <laughs> But why did I call this a gear ship? Well, just goes to show you how Um, how human this main protag is. Although na dal siya, cyborg, na, na robot lang siya, but she she elicits human emotions here. If I don't call this a gear shift, call me an idiot, mga ka-lifestyle. These three gear shifts that I saw, all of them will have implications down the line in this anime. Especially The second one, plot-wise, meron ditong um, backstory sequence. Pero, if you would look at it, ano lang eh, footage. Technically, footage lang. Because, Genchan is trying to analyze uh, Team AR's uh, overall mentality, especially of their their leader, si, M4A1, si M4A1. So, malinis pa rin ang plot, mga ka-lifestyle. Uh, I was I was actually surprised myself that they were able to to um to pull out a plot as clean as this. Isang continuity lang talaga siya. Eh. I could not consider it ironed out dahil ang talagang focus na story dito sa M4A1. So you can I can still consider this a clean plot. Kasi yung continuity ni M4A1 yun ang pinaka crucial dito so if you if the if Asai Productions veered uh, the continuity away from that wala eh sira eh sira yung sira yung plot ng episode kaya I think yeah, I think Asai made a made a good call here if the plan were um, were a bit ironed out hindi mo mafe-feel yung impact ng sequence na to, this, this particular sequence, itong overkill moment na to. Mabuti na lang, ganito kalinis yung plot. Talagang, mafo-focus ka sa sequence na yun eh. Ako, hindi, hindi nga ako makamove on eh. Hindi pa ako mak- nakakamove on. <laughs> so, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Dolls Frontline, episode 3, <laughs> isip pa. Mmm! Two thumbs up. This episode also also shows also showed us how brutal uh, how brutal Sangvis can be. Abuti na lang. They have dolls like they have dolls like um, Team AR on on their side. So not only M4E1. Okay. You can say na yata talaga ano eh. They she showed a human emotion here. And to think na, and to think na robot lang siya. Okay? So, wow! <laughs> Talaga hindi ako, makamove, hindi ako makamove on sa sequence na yun. Right now, it's still in my head. Grabe! January pa lang may overkill moment na. <laughs> That's all I can say, but 
I'm now expecting greater things from this anime because of that sequence. So again, Dolls Frontline Episode 3, two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga kalahin style. Wow. Grabe overkill moment na yun. Grabe. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And to those of you who are still glued to the CHD, okay lang. But I strongly suggest you subscribe to my Patreon or um, join my fan group on Bigo. May exclusive content ako sa inyo doon. But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. So what? Kaya naman lang gusto mangyari ni Inuyasha. He wants the Tensai ga in their, uh, in their um, from in in their place. Dahil, eto ro yung susi para mabuksan yung yung gate na nandos sa kabilang dako ng ano ng parang parang pool na ganon. Bili niya ata sa kanila ni ni uh, ni Lagoso. Right? Uh, I think those are the ones guarding the gate. Kailangan yung Tensai ka para malaman na Okay, siguro Okay. Sa sumaro na ng his blessing, so bilingin yung Tensai ka. Okay, sige. Palapasin na natin mga to. Parang ganun parang ganun yung yung deal dun eh. Nagmadali sila kasi nakita nila ko nung God. <coughs> Sa sobrang kayabangan ni ni Kirin Maru, well, uh, the entire, the, practically the entire dog demon clan now knows of his plan. So, uh, nagmadali silang bumalik sa, uh, actually, pumunta sa libingan ng ng, ng tati nila Inuyasha at Sesumaru. So, yun nga. Um, nilagay muna ni Inuyasha yung tesaiga niya doon sa parang cauldron. Pak, nilagay niya. Sabi, inutusan niya ngayon si Towa. Towa, punta ka na doon. Utusan mo yung Tensaga na pumunta rito. So, kung ano ni Towa? Ha? Paano? <laughs> Nag-concentrate nag lang siya. Then, using her, um, yeah, using her demon energy, eh, naramdaman ka agad ni Sesumaru na tinatawag yung Tensaga. Because, he was about to, um, he was about to draw his combat sword. Para labanan si, si Kirin Maru. Pero mukhang naramdaman niya na the Tensaiga is calling. Towa is calling out for the Tensaiga. So, binuno niyang gano'n yung Tensaiga at nagtaka nga si Kirin Maru. Ha? Don't tell me you're gonna fight me with that. Nope. Well, ano naman na si Sesumaru hindi nagsasalita sa harap na kalaban to. Basta na lang niyang binitawan yung ten, Tensaiga at yun, lumutang na. And, Suddenly, the, the spirit of the great dog demon reached out to it at dinala na doon sa kabilang sa mundo where, uh, where, where Inuyasha is. So, biglang uh, gubulang tangan lupa, Kirimuru was suddenly uh, thrown into the air like a piece of paper. Bigla, kuno na lang, kuno na lang, ting! <laughs> Toa was able to to call for the Tensaiga. Pak, nabuno. Pero nung kukunin na niya, hindi niya mabunot. <laughs> Tinulungan pa siya nila Setsu ng Moro ha, para para punutin. And she even had to use all her demon energy para lang, para tuloy niyang mabunot yun. So much na umitim yung buhok niya. Napansin na magkasawa eh. Di na have the Tensaiga. Pinakita ni Toma doon sa gate. Uy, Bigla may lumitaw na tulay na ganun. So, they were able to cross that bridge. And finally, after 14 years of being imprisoned in the Black Pearl, nakalabas na sila Inuyasha at Kagome. Sabay yung kasabay ng, ano, kasabay ng tatlo. Ang sumulumang pa sa kanila, si Shippo at si Takechiyo. Ayun, binigay na ni... Um, actually, binig, kinuha ni Inuyasha yung Black Pearl. Papasagin na niya sana, but suddenly, of course, eh, Kagome, being, uh, being, the more se being the more sensible half of the two, sabi niya, Uyo, tika mo na! Nandiyan yung link! Nandiyan yung nibig na ng tatay mo! Papapasagin yan! And, well, basically, Inuyasha just said, 
I'm sick and tired of looking at my father's grave. <laughs> eh ngayon, nakiusap na si Moro ha. Sabi, sabi niya, to this effect, Dad, can you just give it to me? Total, lahat ng, lahat ng memories natin bilang pamilya ay nandyan. Sasama ko na lang dito sa rouge ni, na, sa rouge ni Lola. Sinama nga niya. So, well, talk about, uh, talk about retaining the family jewels, okay? So, well, now, they have to go to the three of ages. Kasi, kanina, noong pa na siya hinahat, noong pa na hinahatak ng Tensaga si, Mor, si Towa, towards the three of ages. So, basta sinabi na niya kay, Sinabi na ni Inuyasha kay Shippo, gawa mo na para para makarating tayo doon. At least, at least sa Bone Eaters Well lang. So, yun. They were able to go to the Bone Eaters Well. Then, eventually, they were, uh, um, Towa and Setsu na set up for the Three of Ages. Hindi na sumama si Moro ha, kasi, ah, uh, ikaw yung siguro, hey, that's your family. My family is here. <laughs> that's your business, not mine. Final scene. Winarning and she'll right there ni si Shumaru. That if she, that if she kept on, um, drawing out the excess demon energy with the with the with the sun again, mama matay siya. Looks like his story checks out. Bigla na nang bumagsak na lang nagano na parang bangkay si Towa. Halos blanco mata. Huh. Wow, what a grim ending to this episode. But anyway, let's break this episode down now. ARD, uh, ARD, pwe! CHD style. Base. What? Um. It was a slow and excruciating pacing. Kasi, uh, well, uh, the three main products were trying to find a way to get out of this. And so are, well, you can say, uh, the first couple of the isekai genre. <laughs> so, lahat sila gumagawa na parang ngayon, uh, they were trying to find a way to get out. Kasi, kasi nakulong yung mag-asawa doon for 14 years eh. So, talagang sabik na sabik na silang makalabas. And yun nga, um, from, from, from the scene where Toa actually called out for the called out to the ten, to the Tensaiga. Naging tense lang, naging excruciating na ang pacing. Then nagkaroon ng break nung nakalabas sa sila. Then the pacing uh, became uh, became excruciating again nung nagpupumili na yung Tensaiga na na bumalik kay, uh, obvious, gusto niya bumalik kay Sumaru. So, talagang hinakatak na si Towang ganun. So, it led them to, uh, of course, the Bone Eaters well. Then, to the Three of Ages. And, it end, then the episode ended with that. Um, it's the scene that would make, uh, that would make your heart stop, not just Towas. Okay? I felt that because of the pacing. So, complaints? Ako, I got, I got no complaints. <laughs> Every time Kirin Maru is involved, the, pen, the pacing will always be like this. It's either tense or excruciating. <laughs> Flow naman. First gear shift here was, um, nung nandun na ang tense, Iga. So, ang gagawin lang nito ay bunutin. Hindi niya mabunot. It had to take all three main protags to to completely uh, to completely draw it out of the cauldron. Why did they call it a gear shift? Well, because um, it's the type of gear shift that will give you hope as the viewer. Because, uy, eto lang din saga. Na tawag, na tawag. Uh, successful si to sa pagtawag dito. And uh, and mo ang naranta man talaga ni si Sumaron that that his daughter. What's the Tensai ka? So talagang, shh, binuno niyang gano'n. O sige, pumunta ka na sa kanya. So, it was a, um, uh, it was a satisfying gear shift 
Mainly because the Ten Saga is already there. Bubunutin na lang nito, pero hindi nga niya mabunot. It, it took all of her demon energy plus yung uh, demon energy nila Setsuna at ni Moro, ha? So, nag- talaga nagtulo-tulo sila para mabunod yung Ten Saiga. And, but, bottom line, it was a very satisfying gearship kasi, um, the girls are now one step closer to defeating Kirin Maru. Ayun nga lang, well, now, the stakes are even higher because alam na ng, ng buong dog demon clan kung ano talaga ang plano ni Kirin Maru. He wants to change the future. So, well, at the, at, at the expense of the current timeline. That's how evil he is. Second gear shift was when, ayan, nung, um, nung nakalabas na yung tatlong bida and of course, Inuyasha and Kagome. Why did I call it a gear shift? Kasi reunited! Two different generations of sidekicks, okay? Siyempre, sumalubo sa kanila sila Shippo at Takechiyo. Ang pinaka-sidekick ni, ni Inuyasha dito, si Shippo. Ang tatlo naman, si Takechiyo. Alright? So, it's quite a fan service gear shift kasi takes you back to the days of Inuyasha nung um, nung eh, tawag dito. Loyal ally si um, loyal sidekick si Shippo kay Inuyasha pero pag lumabas na pagiging pasaway ni Inuyasha oh, teka mo na, kay Kagome mo na ako <laughs> it's always a joy to watch pag when he suddenly takes sides with Kagome kasi hindi siya agree sa, sa gagawin ni Inuyasha <laughs> ganun yan eh so talagang uh, if you go back to the original series talagang pag Pinaira ni Inuyasha pagiging pasaway niya talaga wala siyang kakampi. <laughs> Bottom line, it's a it's a, it's a fan service gear shift. Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift to. All right, guys. Final gear shift was Well, for the first time, nakitang malaya ng nakakagalaw. Malay, oh, nakita na ng kambal na malaya na malaya na nakakagalaw ang nanay nila. Ayun nga kasi Uh, sinasamahan si sa Sumaru, yung tatay nila. Kasi, well, he is dying. Because, hinihigop ng demon energy ni Kirin Maru yung kanyang haku. So, yeah. It's both a um, satisfying and sad gear shift. Because, that scene led eventually to, um, well, Toa passing out, pero, Meron ba nagpapasaw na dilat ang mata? So, <laughs> parang, parang inat, mukhang, ang itsura nga niya, parang mukhang, mukhang inatake siya sa puso eh. It also make you think. That's why it's called, that's why it's called the gear shift. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, <sighs> the, um, the final two, will, I, I feel that, I feel will have implications Um, going into the um, the final eight episodes of this uh, spin-off. Nung magkakaroon ng implications ito. If not, at least, if not, if not the next episode, ah. Plot-wise. Excuse me. Malinis. Because <clears throat> There's only one continuity here. Eh. The main continuity of the anime. Yun lang. Wala namang back story or side story. Eh. So, pero hindi. You can also consider um you can also consider yung meeting nila Shippo at uh, Sango a side story. Kasi uh, for the first time, first in a long time na nagkita sila uli. Okay? Not since um not since Not since her twins were little. Yung dalawang babae na... Yung dalawang ate ni Hisui. Yun. Not since that. So, maraming kinwento si Shippo at marami rin kinwento si Sango. So, right there in that, um, that little story confidence of theirs, kasama yung kambal, yung kambal ni Sango at saka yung... saka si Takechiyo. 
Sinabi nga ng Takechi, oh, they're imprisoned here in this black pearl. Dala-dala niya. And, what? <clears throat> sinabi na lang ni Sango that mukhang kailangan ng gamitin yun, na. Ah. Yung, he, she was talking about that black boomerang na, na pinakita na nakasabit na ganun. Na, uh, tinulungan siya ng kampanya para matapos. It's called the, um, yeah, the Black Mirai Kotsu. Mukhang, uh, looks like Sango has been, um, working on a side project of her. She was working on a, looks like this is Sango's side project. Mukhang, ngayon lang ni-reveal ito eh. So, based on that, it's probably a pivotal side story. Kasi, this may have implications later on when, I think when the spin-off is about to end. Baka magkakaroon ng, baka magkakaroon ng silbi ito. Sango might act, Sango might actually use this um, this version of the Mirai, Mirai Kotsu herself. At mukhang hindi niya ipapaubaya kay Hisu ito. So, abangers. But anyway, malinis ang plot. So, base, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Yashahime the second act, episode 16. Mmm. Kaka, two thumbs up. Going back to that theory. Kanta yun. Battle for the ages yun. Or, there will come a point in the episode na talagang magpapakita ng kanyang tunay na uh, lakas si Kirin Maru. So much that probably um, Inuyasha, Sesumaru, and the three main protags magsasama-sama para lang talunin siya. Kasi, just this one time, magsasama-sama ang buong Dog Demon Clan para lang, para lang talunin ng mokong na to. Para, well, para lang. Well, just, just, to, just to end his misery. Right? Just to end his misery. Total. But, just goes to show you that um, the Dog Demon Clan has always been has always been um, a thorn on Kirin Maru's side ever since he he challenged the great dog demon himself to a fight and lost not only did he lose the fight he also lost a horn and an arm <laughs> so well that was his most humiliating defeat kaya hanggang ngayon hindi siya makamove on <laughs> he really wants to um to eradicate this clan so it would be nice that if he he shows his true power and all five that I mentioned would join forces to to, to completely take him out. Rip him apart if necessary. Tama ba mga kalay style? That would be one great finale. So again, Yasha him in the second act. Episode 16. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for the spin off mga kalay style. Feel ko talaga ang talaga matatapos na ang Yasha Hime. Hindi na babalik ito. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still um, glued to the CHD, well, okay lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <laughs>